Here's the deal. I just recently did a video on how Illinois and New Jersey are going the way of Connecticut. Well, Connecticut currently has hundreds of thousands, according to their own numbers, by the way, of Class D felons, because that's how many people did not register their firearms, because the cat's out of the bag. People know that registration is going to lead to confiscation. So what happens to felons in this country? Well, guess what? Trying to smoke or obtain a five-leaf medicinal plant, which has never directly or even indirectly been involved in any killings or deaths of anyone, even though alcohol directly and indirectly kills people all the time, but they won't break down your door for that. But here's what happens when people pursue these felons that own a medicinal plant. The case of Jose Garena, a two-tour former Marine who was killed by a SWAT team carrying out a raid in Pima County, Arizona. The police released over 70 rounds in a matter of about seven seconds, at least 60 of those hitting Garena. And while he bled to death, the police wouldn't allow paramedics to access him inside the house. And at the end of it, no drugs, nothing illegal was found, just weapons and armor that a former Marine may legally possess. Well, if the Gestapo can just run around and break down the wrong door and just shoot the occupants inside, it's no wonder that I always keep this bad boy right next to me, cock-locked and with the safety on, but I can change that in all of half a second. So try me, bitches. Come at my house, Gestapo punks, and see how many of you I can blow away. I just love to see. But now more details have emerged, including a video released by the Department of Police. Well, this, unfortunately, is a scene that we see or read about far too often. Raids gone wrong, turning violent, innocent men and women killed. But they rarely make the news. So joining me to discuss why that is is Radley Balco, senior writer for the Huffington Post. Radley, always great to have you on the show. Now, uh, you've been covering the story pretty extensively, and the story itself has changed many times. Surprise, surprise. Can you walk us through some of the inconsistencies? Sure. Um, well, the, the Pima County Sheriff's Department originally said that, uh, that Mr. Uh, Grana had fired at them. Uh, they later changed that story to say that uh, actually not only ha had he not fired, but his, uh, his rifle was, the safety was still engaged um, uh, after he was shot. Um, they're now saying this was originally an Amer a marijuana investigation. Now they're saying it was part of a home in an investigation into a home invasion ring. Uh, and they're saying that, uh, you know, he was a, uh, a potentially a very dangerous person, that he was committing, possibly committing armed robberies. Actually, what they're saying is he was linked to a chain of armed robberies. Uh, but so far, there's no evidence, uh, still no evidence that, that he was. The thing is, though, uh, the Sheriff's Department has even scolded the media for criticizing this story, for criticizing the fact that the information keeps changing, and for questioning whether the raid really was conducted legally. Is that something that, you know, that we see often? Is that a trend when you cover these cases? Yeah, it's typical. I mean, what they do is when, when people start asking questions about one of these raids and they start pointing out inconsistencies in the police story, uh, they do a couple things. First, they go into kind of a bunker mentality and they start cutting off information flow. Um, in this case, they've sealed the search warrants and the police affidavits that, uh, that led to the raid. Um, and then they also uh, do kind of a leaking smear campaign uh, against the person uh, who was killed in the raid. And this, we've seen it with, in this case with, uh, with Mr. Lorena, who, you know, ha had no prior criminal record. Uh, again, nothing illegal was in his home. Uh, but, you know, I mean, even if, even if he was... Uh, Part of this home invasion ring. I mean, this was a really sloppy, uh, careless, unprofessional raid. I mean, if you look at that video, I've actually talked to some former military people who carry carry out these raids and train people to carry them out in, in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, over the last uh, 24 hours or so. And they told me, look, I mean, we show way more caution and way more sort of consideration for uh, the possibility of innocence in these buildings when we carry out raids on a battlefield. Um, you know, and these are U.S. citizens who ostensibly have constitutional rights, uh, and people in the military who have seen these raids, uh, who have seen video of this raid, uh, are sort of astounded. Boom! Well, there you have it. You know what my point is? Well, guess what? All these people that are not going to register their firearm in all these new states that are popping up, let alone Connecticut, they're all felons. What does that mean? Are they going to have to send the jackboots to their house? Well, you're damn straight they are. Look at that bullshit. They killed that guy, and they had the wrong house. 
Do you understand how ridiculous this is? And that's over a medicinal five leaf plant that has never directly or indirectly killed anybody. So imagine how bad it's gonna be when they come after these lawful gun owners that were smart enough not to register their weapons because they know it's gonna lead to confiscation. Hundreds of thousands in Connecticut alone. I'm not sure how many SWAT team raids they're gonna need to kill countless innocent people for all that. And now we're looking at Illinois and the state of New Jersey following suit. Do you understand how important this is? Any politician talking about registration needs to be kicked to the curb or put down like a sick dog. Do you understand me? I've already laid it all out. It's very clear what's gonna take place if they don't leave the Second Amendment alone. There's a reason why it says, shall not be infringed. And if we have to show these politicians the hard way, then that's what we got to do. Our forefathers kicked tyrant ass before, and we sure as hell can do it again.